Hello everyone, I'm John Furrier here in the Palo Alto Cube studios. I'm the co-host of the Cube, also co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media. We're here for some big news from Veritas. We're with Eric Seidman, who's the director of solutions marketing for Veritas. Veritas is introduced and today and the press release is on the wire of Veritas Predictive Insights. Eric, thanks for coming in today and sharing thanks, the news. Absolutely, thanks for having me. So um, you guys have a unique new thing for Veritas, not new to the industry, but new and in capabilities called Predictive Insights. Right. I know Dave Vellante has actually linked on your press release and covered it in Chicago uh, exactly. as, a, as an embargo. Yep. This is exciting news for Veritas because you guys are, have so much customer install based, tons of data. Talk about what this product is, what's the news? Well, thanks John. Yeah, the, actually the news, it's pretty exciting. Our customers are very exciting and receptive about it. What it's actually doing is helping our customers reduce both planned and unplanned downtime. And the way we're doing that is with an analytics engine that we've developed that's taking all the data from over 15,000 of our appliances around the world. We've been collecting that data for three years. We have hundreds of millions of data points from that. And we're utilizing our own AI ML engines that we've created to be able to predict things in customers' environments that may cause them downtime or outages and fix those before they happen. So that's why our customers are really excited about it. So how much does this cost? Well, <laughs> it doesn't really cost anything. It's a value add. You know, if our customers are utilizing our Veritas auto support services today, then as of yesterday, the service is turned on and we're already looking at their systems and creating this intelligence on them. And so this is immediately a new, value them. So this is a new product from Veritas that yep. takes existing operational data mm -hmm. from your customer's environment. Correct. You guys are matching in your corpus of metadata. Exactly. Uh, telemetry data, what, hundreds of millions of signals, yep. call center, real log data around real outages and real right. things. Right. And creating machine learning and AI on top of it to extract value for you guys or for the customer? Well, it's, it's really for the customer. The, the benefit for the customer is that we have insights into you know, our, syst our worldwide you know, universe of customers, but we can look at individual systems and say, why is this one operating differently than the others? And then the, the machine learning will actually determine that you know, the ones that are operating really well have this patch and this patch installed and you know, those types of things. And then we can apply that learning in that model to a particular customer's system. And they get a dashboard. And they get a dashboard that'll highlight uh, what we call a system reliability score. So there's this, you know, big enterprises, there's, there's a lot of fatigue associated with events that are occurring all the time. And you think of an enterprise, yeah. I mean we have customers with many, many just net backup appliances alone, but you think of their entire infrastructure and all the alerts that they're getting, that creates a lot of fatigue. A lot of things go unfixed uh, yeah. because they're minor events, like maybe a patch needs to be installed or a firmware update, while they're fixing the more hair on fire problems. Uh, but then ultimately those, what look like smaller events build up and build up and then they create outages. So what we're able to do is to identify which systems have potential anomalies, highlight those very visually, and then they can drill down and we'll have prescriptive uh, maintenance that can be taken to so improve so that So site score. reliability score, let me just get that in a second. Yeah. I think that's a big deal. I want to read the press release headline. Okay. Veritas Predictive Insights uses artificial intelligence, AI, and machine learning, ML, to predict and prevent unplanned service. Now, key word there is unplanned service. This mm -hmm. is kind of the doomsday scenario for a customer. If they get a large data center or large infrastructure devices, unplanned basically means an outage. An something outage. happened, yeah. something bad happened. Something bad happened. And no one likes that. So what you guys are doing is giving them a value-added dashboard that taps into a product, so if, if and correct me if I'm wrong, but a customer that has Veritas, if they have the products, they get the service. If they become a customer, they now have the capability built in Absolutely. out of the gate. Right. And so they see all this. So you're taking all the data from years of yep. experience. Exactly. Giving them a dashboard to help them look at unplanned downtime type scenarios and give them specific actions to take, predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics for them. Exactly. So what we're trying to really achieve for our customers is to use that intelligence and machine learning to identify things that may cause an outage in the future and prevent that outage from occurring, yeah. causing that downtime by taking remedial action in advance of that happening. And that's, that's yeah. the beauty of Predictive Insights. That's really what it's providing for our customers. So you guys have this always on feature called auto support feature. Correct. That kicks in and this brings the system reliability score, SRS. 
Um, I think this is important, I want you to explain this. Mm -hmm. I think this is a trend we're seeing certainly on the cloud side of the market. Google has pioneered this concept called site reliability engineer. Uh -huh. Over years of practice on how to make their infrastructure work great. So we know that that kind of concept of having you know, reliability. You guys are now giving a score to each appliance. Correct. It's almost like a health detector or like credit score. Uh, definitely, credit score is a good analogy. So explain that. SRS, what's it mean for the customer and what's the impact to them? Yeah, so I don't know if you ever, like maybe utilize one of those credit scoring apps or something like that, where it's monitoring your credit from three different agencies or whatever. That's kind of what we're doing, only the data sets are coming from a much broader set of appliances, right? But we're showing you your system reliability score, credit score, if you will. And then we're showing you very prescriptively the processes you can take to improve your credit score, if you will, or your system's health and reliability. So that might be installing a firmware patch, uh, installing a software update, things of that nature, replacing some drives that may fail in the future. And all of those steps will then yeah. increase that, that And also, you know, when you see the hacking world, you know that, you know that the biggest, you know, one of the biggest parts of um, security breaches is, you know, not loading a patch. Yeah, um, exactly. The unplanned, unforeseen things are, you know, some sort of thing goes on, hurricane, wildfire, you, ever know, you never know what's going to happen, so you got to be, pre be prepared for those kinds of mm -hmm. infrastructure chains or whatever. So I get that, so I, the operators can have a nice dashboard, I totally buy that. I want to get into the impact to the, to the more on the business side. Mm -hmm. How does this help the business owner that's that your customer. Does this yeah. help them with planning, um, refresh rates, total cost of ownership? Can you just talk about the impact of sure. how this data relates to their job? Because I'd be like, what's in it for me? Yeah, no, exactly. And, uh, and there's really three key areas that we're addressing for our customers. I mean, the first one is around improving their operational efficiency, right? Again, reducing that alert fatigue and make it easier on the infrastructure management to do their job uh, with less headaches, with less dashboards lighting up. So it's very, very prescriptive on highlighting what needs to be done and helping them through that process. The other area is around the, f uh, the prescriptive fault, potential fault detection and fixing those anomalies before they can actually cause a downtime event, right? And doing that in advance. So that's reducing the planned and unplanned downtime, which it's can be you know, significant in terms of cost to your business. I think one of the ana analysts states that there's 20 million a year in uh, costs associated with downtime events like that. And that varies by industry, and that's right? A, that's a dart at the board, it's, 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 big, it's a big number. It's a big number. It's a big number, yeah. you pick your number, right? And it's huge. Yeah, and then the third area is really around helping our customers have um, better predict predictability into what their utilization requirements are. So the benefit there is really helping them improve their ROI on our appliances, because now they don't have to overbuy and over provision, say capacity, because we can show them the trend data, uh, the amount of efficiency they're getting from dedupe, and they can right size their appliances in terms of performance and capacity, and then we can warn them in advance. And that's a real big thing, is what's yeah. happening there, that's proactive. It's very it's proactive. It's not reactive. It's exactly. Well, you can solve them on the reactive side, because you can just fix it. Mm -hmm. But then the proactive side is weirdly where things break as you blow over capacity, yeah. you might want to add more. B yeah, believe it or not, you know, those types of things have caused downtime events in our customers where they're assuming their backups are going to complete, as an example with net backup appliances, and yet they're out of capacity and at the last moment and that's a, you know, a fire drill for them. So we can show them out 30, 60, 90 days what their utilization is and then a threshold is that at this point in time you're going to have potential outage, or some kind of problem. And so we recommend that you add this capacity uh, before right, that Eric, talk occurs. about the customer reaction. As you guys, obviously it's announced today, you, yeah. you talk to customers all the time. When you showed customers in pre-launch, what was some of the feedback you guys heard? What were the key areas? What, what, did they, what did they hone in on? What was the key things about the predictive insights that made them um, get jazzed up about this? Yeah, so it's it really, in the, I, I would say it covers the, the two key areas that I already mentioned. One of them is helping prevent unplanned downtime. That's a big concern for our customers in any industry. And this is going to be able to help them overcome that, you know, that kind of rear view mirror look as to what's happening in the data center and fixing a problem after it's occurred. Now they'll be able to <clears throat> be in advance of that and, uh, and eliminate or at least significantly reduce those types of issues. And then the other one is helping again in, the, in that event fatigue at the operational model. That's where we've gotten the best feedback. So I got to ask you um, the hard question, which is, hey, you know, our predictive analytics has been around for a while, mm -hmm. predictive. Why now? What's different about this 
opportunity. Obviously, free is good because you can get your, your customers get turned on pretty quickly. They yeah. get the benefits immediately, and net new customers get it. I mean, I get that piece. Yeah. But what's different about you guys with this versus what might be out in the market? Yeah, I would say the key differentiation is is that we have this very, very large universe of installed based systems that we've been gathering data on for over three years now. Uh, so the more data you have, the more data points you have, the better results you'll get from a machine learning type of environment. And we're still collecting data, both from uh, the machines that are coming in from the telemetry data, as well of, as from our service personnel. So that, right off the bat, makes our, our kind of solution unique in um, others that may have been like out sooner in that we've developed a rich data set that is you know, being applied to the machine learning, and hence our results out the gate are very, very good. And you're using that, you're not actually charging for it, so that's yeah. another big one. That's true too. Yeah. So let's get into the specifics <coughs> on the rollout. Um, mm -hmm. So this is a digital transformation table stake. You guys are checking sure. a big box here, this is good. Uh, and it gives your, your, your product some capability to yep. leverage that metadata. And that is what the, what, what uh, this data-driven world's about. And certainly IOT is going to even make this even yeah, more absolutely. of a, a table stake. Um, on the rollout side, it's all appliances, Veritas. Mm -hmm and then software only, and then you're going to go beyond Veritas. Is that right? Yeah. Explain that, what does yeah. that mean? So I get the appliances. What does software only mean, and what does beyond Veritas mean? Yeah, sir. so just to reiterate, today it's of our appliances only. But many of our customers consume our solutions as software, right? And they're putting it on their bring your own server model. Uh, probably about 40% of our customers, right? So we believe we can add this type of capability to be able to provide insights into our software that's installed on uh, independent third-party hardware as well. Uh, maybe some of the capabilities won't be as rich, but we're going to start building those capabilities over time and try to bring in that data and help those customers that are software-only customers. And that's on the roadmap. That's on the roadmap. Because yeah. it's not available today. Okay, yeah. beyond Veritas. Yeah, so obviously, <laughs> many of our customers today are protecting data on-prem, protecting uh, data in the cloud, or some kind of hybrid model, and we support, we don't really care where the customers want to store their data, we're, capable of protecting it and um, helping them achieve uh, whatever those cloud type of uh, initiatives are in their environment. So an obvious next step would be to, hey, how, how can we bring this to help you know where your data is located and how it's working in those environments? Is, is that uh, backup going to be able to be restored as an example? So we're looking at yeah. you know, future capabilities to add on to this that are going to be huge value to our customers. This is great news, thanks for coming in and sharing, really appreciate it. I want to get nice your job. thoughts on uh, some observations that we've been making. Mm -hmm. Certainly the CUBE coverage of Veritas has been increased. Dave Vellante has been out on the road with the team. I've looked at some of the new backup recovery versions, looking at new UI, everything's got yeah. kind of a new Veritas going on here. Kind of is. Um, what's the vibe going on in Veritas? What's new about Veritas for the folks watching now and saying, hmm, this is really cool. Veritas is cool and relevant right now. You guys, products are product market fit, Mm -hmm. You just got kind of a new Veritas vibe going on. What's it all about? Share your, your thoughts. Yeah, so I think there's, you know, some people call us legacy, right? But I don't think that's necessarily a bad term, right? I mean, like, when I'm, when I'm gone, I hope I've left a, a legacy, right, that's worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, and so we have that legacy, which is great, because we've been adding uh, this value for our customers uh, many, many years, right? But what's new and exciting, I think, for us is that we're able to provide solutions that are very, very simple to utilize, very easy to accommodate whatever their requirements are, whether it's on-prem, hybrid, or, or in the cloud, we don't, we don't really care. So we've kind of progressed, I would say, into a very, very modern architecture for what we're doing mm -hmm. and meeting the requirements today of what our customers are doing as well as looking forward. And this predictive insights piece, I think is just another you know, manifestation of how we're progressing as a company, what we can bring to, to uh, bear today on current problems in the data center, and also looking out in terms of you know where the future requirements are as well. I'm ready for those. Well, legacy is a great word. I love you. Thank you for that because because it's a double-edged sword. If you're a legacy and you don't do anything and you <laughs> rest on your legacy, then it kind of you you're just it's milking that until fair. the legacy dry. Um, but if you look at what Microsoft's done, um, they were their their classic word is a legacy vendor. You know, Office was shrink wrap software. Yeah. Satya Nadella comes over and now they're the darling of cloud. They've shifted their product and execution to be what customers want, which is cloud, now they got Office 365, exactly. Azure's you know, been repurposed, there's some stuff that they're still working on, but, but clearly cleared the runway. Yeah. And you know, 
Oracle, not so much, Microsoft has. So this is a Veritas kind of vibe that's going on similarly to Microsoft. You guys are looking at, hey, we got to install base, we're going to use that and leverage yeah, the absolutely. assets of that install base, that legacy, harness it, and make it part of the digital transformation. Is that kind of that vibe? Yeah, no, exactly. And I think Microsoft's a great uh, example. I mean, we're in tight partnership with Azure, as a matter of fact. I just came from one of our Vision, Vision Solution, Solutions days where a gentleman from Azure shared the stage with us and talking yeah. about our partnerships and all that. So, I mean, great example, right? But we're bringing those capabilities uh, into the cloud era, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, solutions that run natively in cloud, yeah. help help that environment, so. Making the transition to digital yeah. transformation. Veritas, the new Veritas, they got the solutions that are cloud enabled, using data for the benefit of the customers, not just trying to you know, bolt it on and, and make more money, they're actually bringing value to the t install base and, and changing the game up. Eric Seidman here inside theCUBE, Director of Solutions Marketing at Veritas, uh, part of the CUBE conversation, part of their news coverage of their predictive insights. I'm John Furrier here in, in the Palo Studios. Thanks for watching.